Did you know that mirror silvering technology was once a guarded state secret, protected at the cost of human lives, where anyone who tried to uncover it could vanish in the shadows, never to be seen again? Yet today, we can witness that entire secret from start to finish. From the lifeless grains of sand buried deep beneath the earth, melted at blistering temperatures, to the moment a metal layer thinner than a strand of hair transforms an ordinary sheet of glass into a finished mirror. And now join the Factorin as we explore how a technique once locked away behind Europe's tightest security became one of the most widespread industrial technologies in our modern world. Few people know that for over 19 centuries, mirrors were made using mercury. Craftsmen coated the back of glass with a thin layer of tin, then poured liquid mercury over it, allowing the two metals to fuse and create a brilliant reflective surface. For a very long time, this was considered the most advanced mirror-making method in all of Europe. However, the process was extremely toxic. Mercury vapor evaporates easily, enters the body through the skin and the lungs, and slowly damages the nervous system. Many artisans suffered trembling hands, memory loss, mental decline, and in countless cases, death caused silently by mercury poisoning. The turning point only appeared in the 19th century when the German chemist Justus von Liebig introduced the silvering method through controlled chemical reactions. This breakthrough completely changed the world of mirrors. What was once a luxury reserved only for nobles became something ordinary families could own and use every day. Today, the global mirror industry has grown into a material empire valued at more than $100 billion, shaping everything from home interiors and automotive manufacturing to modern architecture and solar energy systems. You might not know this, but every mirror begins as sand, not the familiar yellow sand we see on beaches or construction sites, but pure white silica sand with an extremely high concentration of silicon dioxide and almost no impurities. This special type of sand is not found on the surface. Instead, it lies buried deep beneath layers of solid rock. To reach it, engineers must drill into the earth, plant explosives, and detonate controlled industrial blasts to fracture the stone above. Few people ever imagine that the journey of a mirror begins with a thunderous explosion strong enough to shake the ground. Once extracted, the silica sand must be washed and sieved several times to remove clay, fine dust, and minerals that could discolor the final product. When it reaches the required purity, the sand is mixed with soda ash to lower the melting temperature inside the furnace, and with limestone to reinforce the glass structure so it does not dissolve or deform over time. But the most remarkable part of this mixture is the addition of recycled glass, usually between 15 and 30%. Crushed glass melts much faster than raw sand, significantly reducing fuel consumption while making the final glass clearer and more homogeneous. This blend is considered the ideal foundation for glass making, the very first material in the long journey that eventually becomes a mirror. The mixture is then fed into a massive gas furnace heated to about 3000 degrees Fahrenheit hotter than molten lava. Over the course of 24 hours, the sand loses its granular form and transforms into liquid glass, reaching a perfect viscosity. Continuous stirring keeps the melt uniform, eliminating bubbles and microscopic impurities to achieve maximum clarity. Under this extreme heat, the entire batch becomes a thick, flowing liquid, almost like slow-moving magma. Once the molten glass reaches the right consistency, it is poured onto a bath of molten tin, the foundation of the float glass process. Because glass is lighter, it floats and naturally spreads across the tin surface, forming an exceptionally smooth sheet. Leaving the tin bath, the glass is still glowing red and moves into a cooling tunnel stretching more than 800 feet. Inside, the temperature gradually drops from around 1,100 degrees Fahrenheit down toward ambient conditions through a slow, controlled annealing stage. This gentle cooling prevents internal stress, warping, cracking, or deformation before it advances to the metal coating phase. Once the sheet has fully stabilized, 
Large panes are transferred to the cutting line for sizing and further processing. Before becoming a mirror, the large glass sheet enters an automated cutting line. Here, a CNC cutting table uses an ultra-fine carbide or diamond wheel to score a nearly invisible fracture across the surface. The machine does not slice through the glass, it only creates a micro-thin score line. When slight pressure is applied, the fracture travels perfectly along that path, separating the sheet into two sharp, clean, perfectly straight pieces. Next, the edges are ground and beveled to remove sharpness, improving safety and preventing cracks or chipping during later stages of processing. Once the edges are finished, the glass is transferred to the inspection room. Under specialized fluorescent lighting, technicians can detect even the smallest defects, tiny air bubbles, scratches, inclusions, or color variations. Faulty sections are trimmed away to reduce waste, while flawless sheets are approved, packaged, and sent onward to the mirror production facility. When the glass arrives at the mirror manufacturing facility, it is placed onto a conveyor line and sent directly to the surface cleaning section. The cleaning process begins with high-pressure spray nozzles that apply a mixture of water and cerium oxide, an ultra-fine mineral powder known for its ability to polish and remove inorganic contaminants. Immediately after, high-speed rotating brushes scrub both sides of the glass, eliminating oils, release agents, dust particles, and even fingerprints left from handling and transport. The sheet then passes through a second rinse using heated demineralized water. A crucial step, since ordinary tap water can contain dissolved minerals that may react with the metal coating later, leading to dark spots and reducing the mirror's lifespan. Once complete, the surface is clean to a level almost impossible to detect with the naked eye. Only at this point is the glass considered ready for the next stage, the metal coating process that will give it the ability to reflect light. Before we move on to the next stage, try a small experiment. Look at yourself in a mirror, and then take a photo using the rear camera of your phone. Notice the difference? Share your thoughts in the comments below. That difference exists because the mirror has an ultra-thin metal layer on its back, allowing it to reflect light almost perfectly, while a camera can only recreate the image through processing and algorithms. And now, let's see how that metallic layer is formed. The process begins by applying a liquid tin chloride coating to the back of the glass. On its own, glass is extremely smooth, and silver cannot adhere directly to it. The tin acts as a crucial bonding layer, a kind of primer, allowing metal to attach firmly to the glass surface, even though the tin itself has no reflective properties. Immediately afterward, the glass is coated with liquid silver. A silver nitrate solution is mixed with a chemical reducer, and the moment it contacts the tin layer, a reaction occurs almost instantly. Silver crystallizes into a thin metallic film tightly bonded to the glass. Within seconds, the surface transforms into a reflective mirror, clear enough for you to see yourself right away. Once the silver layer stabilizes, the sheet passes through a series of spray nozzles to remove excess silver. The recovered material is collected and recycled to prevent waste of this precious metal. Before becoming the bright reflective layer on the back of a mirror, silver undergoes a long journey from deep within the earth. One of the world's most productive sources of silver lies in Zacatecas, Mexico, home to the Proaño mine, which has operated continuously since 1566. It remains one of the highest yielding silver mines on the planet, contributing roughly 20% of the global supply. In nature, silver almost never appears in pure form. Instead, it is typically found within a canthite, a dark gray mineral composed of silver sulfide. To reach the scattered silver veins buried across multiple geological layers, miners descend nearly 400 meters into humid, dusty tunnels where temperatures can climb to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Every month, more than 3,000 meters of new passageways are carved using large rotary cutting machines. After laser surveys pinpoint the ore locations, Workers drilled dozens of blast holes, each around 25 to 32 meters deep. Explosives are placed inside at calculated angles, and the entire area is evacuated for detonation. Precision is critical. 
the blast must fracture the rock into transportable pieces without collapsing the tunnels. Each day, more than 7,000 tons of ore are hauled through an underground rail system to a central processing station before being lifted to the surface by heavy loaders. Once transported to the surface, the silver-bearing rock undergoes crushing and chemical processing to separate silver from the surrounding minerals. The ore is first fed into massive industrial crushers, rotating drums filled with hundreds of large steel balls. As the drums spin, the balls tumble and collide with the rock, grinding it down into a fine sand-like powder. This mineral powder is then mixed with a specialized reagent, a chemical agent designed to alter the surface properties of silver particles. The reagent makes the silver grains hydrophobic, causing them to float during the froth flotation process while the unwanted minerals sink. The result is a light layer of froth enriched with silver, containing only about 2% of the original mass, yet representing the most valuable fraction. The concentrated mixture is then smelted at temperatures above 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. During this stage, impurities such as lead, zinc, and copper oxidize and are removed. If traces of gold remain, the material undergoes further refining through electrolysis in a silver nitrate solution. Silver ions migrate and crystallize on the negative electrode, while gold and other precious metals separate at the positive side. The final product reaches up to 99% purity, ready to be used in the mirror coating process. Once the reflective metal layer has formed on the back of the glass, the next task is to protect it from oxygen and sulfur, two elements that can tarnish a mirror in just a few months. Silver is highly reactive to the environment, so the factory applies a thin layer of copper across the surface. Any excess copper is washed away with automated spray nozzles, and then the glass enters a drying chamber heated to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit for roughly 75 seconds, ensuring that all moisture is fully removed. With the surface completely dry, the sheet moves on to a curtain coating system. Here, a continuous curtain of liquid paint flows downward, covering the entire back of the mirror. The first layer, usually gray, hides the metal and provides moisture resistance. After coating, the mirror is baked at around 210 degrees Fahrenheit, so the paint can set and stabilize. Next comes a second, thicker and more durable layer designed to improve scratch resistance and absorb physical impact. This layer is cured at approximately 244 degrees Fahrenheit for nearly twice as long as the first bake, creating a harder, more protective surface that bonds firmly to the metallic layer beneath. Once the protective layers have fully cured, the mirror enters the final inspection stage. Each sheet is positioned upright and examined for defects such as scratches, trapped air bubbles, uneven coloration, or weak reflective areas. If imperfections are found near the edges, those sections are trimmed away. If the defects sit closer to the center, the mirror may be cut down into smaller pieces with more usable dimensions. Modern sensor-based scanners are also used to assess the uniformity of the silver coating and the paint layers. Any sheet that meets quality standards then moves forward to formatting and packaging. Once the main structural layers are complete, the mirror moves into the shaping line. This is where large, flat, uniform sheets are transformed into products built to the customer's exact specifications. The process is fully CNC controlled, using carbide blades or diamond-coated saws to produce clean, accurate cuts. Diamond, the hardest substance ever discovered, slices through glass smoothly, almost as easily as a hot knife through butter. From this point, mirrors can be shaped into virtually any form. Round, square, rectangular, oval, hexagonal, or even into complex curved designs for artistic applications. Every cut path is calculated by software to ensure precision down to the millimeter. If minor defects are detected, like air bubbles, surface scratches, or uneven patches, the faulty area is removed and only the flawless glass is kept, reducing material waste. After shaping, the mirror edges may be ground, beveled, or polished depending on its final purpose. These details enhance the mirror's appearance while also improving safety,
preventing sharp edges from causing injury during installation. In the final step, the mirror is cleaned, inspected once more, and wrapped with shock-resistant and moisture-proof protection for shipping. From the production floor, these mirrors travel across the world. From everyday bathroom fixtures to commercial malls, photography studios, and architectural installations. The mirror we look into every day is, in fact, one of the most sophisticated achievements of modern industry. Beneath that calm, flawless surface lies a chain of technologies controlled with micrometer precision, glass heated beyond molten lava, metal layers thinner than a strand of hair, and protective coatings that allow a mirror to last for decades without losing its shine. It's surprising to realize that something so ordinary is actually the result of material science, chemistry, and precision engineering, combined into a global industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars. What material or manufacturing process would you like the factor in to uncover next? Leave a comment. Your idea might just become the next video.